This was an old man. Not an incredibly old man. Obsolete, spavined, not as worn as the sway back to stone steps ascending the Pyramid of the Sun to the ancient temple. Not yet a relic. But even so, a very old man. This old man perched on an antique shooting stick, its handles open to form a seat. Its spike thrust at an angle into the soft ground and trimmed grass of the cemetery. Gray. Thin rain misted down at almost the same angle as at that which the spike pierced the ground. The winter barren trees lay flat and black against an aluminum sky, unmoving in the chill wind. An old man sitting at the foot of a grave mound whose headstone had tilted slightly when the earth had settled, sitting in the rain and speaking to someone below. They tore it down, Minna. I tell you, they must have bought off a councilman, came in with bulldozers at six o'clock in the morning, and you know that's not legal. There's a municipal code, supposed to hold off until at least seven on weekdays, eight on the weekend, but there they were at six, even before six, barely light for God's sakes. Thought they'd sneak in and do it before the neighborhood got wind of it and call the landmarks committee. Sneaks. They come on holidays. Can you imagine? But I was out there waiting for them and I told them you can't do it. That's code number 91.03002 subsection E. And they lied and said they had special permission. So I said to the big mucky muck in charge, let's see your waiver permit. And he said the code didn't apply in this case because it was supposed to be only for grading. And so the, since they were demolishing and not grading, they could start whenever they felt like it. So I told him I'd call the police then because it came under the heading of disturbing the peace. And he said, well, I know you hate that kind of language, old girl, so I won't tell you what he said, but you can imagine. So I called the police and gave them my name. And of course they didn't get there till almost a quarter after seven which is what makes me think they bought off a councilman. And by then, those dozers had leveled most of it. Doesn't take long, you know that. And I don't suppose it's as great a loss as maybe, say, the Great Library of Alexandria, but it was still the last of the authentic Deco Day drive sign drive-ins, and the car hops still served you on roller skates, and it was a landmark, and just about the only place left in the city where you could still get a decent grilled cheese sandwich pressed very flat on the grill by one of those weights that you used to use, made with real cheese and not that rancid plastic they cut into squares and call it cheese food. Gone, old dear, gone and mourned, and I understand the plan they, to put up another one of those mini malls on the site, just ten blocks away from the one that's already there. And you know what's going to happen, the new one will dry, drain off the traffic from the older one, and then that one will fall, fail by the way they all do when the next one gets built. You'd think they'd see some history in it, but no, they never learn. And you should have seen the crowd by 7.30. All ages, even some of those kids painted like aborigines with torn leather clothing. They came to protest. Terrible language. But at least they were concerned, and nothing could stop it. They just whammed it, and down it went. I do so miss you today, Minna. No more good grilled cheese, said the very old man to the ground. And now he was crying softly. And now the wind rose, and the mist rain stippled his overcoat. Nearby, yet at a distance, Billy Canetta stared down at another grave. He could see the old man over there off to his left, but he took no further notice. The wind whipped the vent of his trench coat. His color was up, but rain trickled down his neck. This was a younger man, not yet thirty-five. Unlike the old man, Billy Canetta neither cried nor spoke to memories of someone who had once listened. He might have been a geomancer, so silently did he stand, eyes toward the ground. One of these men was black, the other was white. And that, my friends, is how we open up the paladin of the Lost Hour. And that is the opening story in the collection Angry Candy by Harlan Ellison. And this was my first collection of Harlan Ellison uh, that I've read. And from the opening pages of the introduction even before getting the Paladin of the Lost Hour. I knew that I was in for one amazing ride. Um, I had met Harlan Ellison earlier this year for the first time with uh, Repent Harlequin, said the TikTok man. Followed it up with some of his other great stories. Jeff D is five, I Have No Mouth and Must Scream, uh, and, and stories of that nature. In fact, in June, I encouraged anybody 
to pick up some Harlan Ellison and, and read at least a story. And it sounds like universally everybody that did participate in that enjoyed what they chose to read. And so I was excited to get into here. And I, I read the a first couple of stories and the introduction uh, on my birthday back in June and had a blast. Uh, and, and the real interesting thing about that opening story uh, came in the very last line I read. Uh, that you, you're introduced to two characters there uh, at a graveyard. And it tells you that one of them is black and one of them is white. It doesn't tell you which one. That is up for you, the reader, to decide and interpret it along the way. And, and it doesn't impact the story in any way, shape, or form. Oh. It's interesting that Harlan Ellison would write a story like that and do it so wonderfully where it leaves it wide open. And I, my understanding is they made uh, some sort of a screen adaptation of this and did a good job of making it so it was unclear which was which over the course of the, the story. And uh, I really, really enjoyed that one. That definitely my favorite of the stories in here. But that wasn't the only fantastic story. The, the big thing in here comes with the region between, which takes up well over half of the... The, the book here and it's got slimmer margins because it's decorative and it's got a lot of images along the way which helps uh, when you've got something that's you know 90 some pages almost something like that uh, but it's enjoyable and you have moments on the page let's see if I can find one towards the end there got one in particular I'm thinking of well here's a good example so it does things to experiment with uh, what, what's being told and it does so in a really really interesting way um, here's the page I was thinking of and you, you have this circle of text that you would read thankfully only the one circle in there uh, so if you like experimental that that is a story the region between will fascinate you and it's a really good story that's being told his introduction uh, is titled, The Wind Took Your Answer Away, and it introduces that this entire collection, uh, unexpectedly, it wasn't until he started thinking about it uh, intentionally, that all of the stories he was picking out for the collection had to deal with death in some way, shape, or form. Uh, some in direct ways, others in indirect ways. And it absolutely does so uh, really, really well. And, and so it's quite quite the endeavor to, to get through here. And so we, we've got a long list here. Some of the ones I remember um, standing out. Uh, Prince Mishkin and Hold the Relish was a, a really fun one. The region between which I mentioned, Paladin of the Last Hour, of course. Uh, Laugh Track was rather interesting. Um, with Virgil Autumn at the East Pole was very unusual and very fascinating. The Avenger of Death uh, was excellent. Uh, probably my second favorite uh, out of here. The Function of Dream Sleep uh, was really good. Soft Monkey was good. Uh, there, there's just so many good ones in here that this was a, I feel like, a, a really good way to get to know Harlan Ellison, uh, other than just reading, you know, The, the Greatest Hits. It's like when you find a band that you like, you know, you, you hear some of their best songs, but then you want to pick up an album to listen to them, and you know that you're going to have some things that you're going to recognize on there, and you've got a particular sound that you're hoping to hear based on what you know of them, but being able to find those less heralded tracks is part of the joy of experimenting with albums, because... It's not just about the, the best of the hits that get played and, and broadcast and everybody loves them. Uh, you know, just, just like with any album out there, there are going to be tracks that you might like even more than what was played on the radio. And, uh, you know, certainly with Angry Candy, uh, 
there are some stories in here that probably only a handful of people have ever read uh, outside of ones that have picked up this volume. They're not ones that you would encounter uh, typically outside of this. And uh, it's a shame because they are absolutely uh, enjoyable and well worth exploring. This won't be my last uh, time visiting Harlan Ellison. He is absolutely on a list of authors that I intend to uh, read more by going forward. He is uh, quickly catapulting himself into the list of favorite science fiction authors, uh, joining the ranks of Ray Bradbury, who's already on there. And I think Joe Haldeman would be, would be my other one to form my current three favorites. But it, it's hard to say, um, because I'm still extremely new uh, to the realm of science fiction. I've got a lot of them on my shelf, and I'm working my way through them. There are so many authors out there that I just haven't encountered yet, uh, or ones where I've maybe read a story in a collection, uh, and I want to read more by them. Uh, Jack Vance being one that recently comes to mind from the, the good old stuff. Uh, I read and enjoyed his story. Uh, C.M. Cornwood. Uh, those were the two most recent ones I read, and absolutely enjoyed both of them. I have a book by each of them on my shelf that I plan to get to sooner rather than later because of how much I enjoyed those stories. And uh, you know, it's enjoyable diving back in because so many of these authors were prolific in terms of just uh, pouring out lots and lots of short fiction as well as some longer works. And there's so much to explore and it's exciting. Uh, and uh, Harlan Ellison, as I mentioned before, I'm excited to encounter him not just as the writer, but also as the editor uh, and the, the screenplay writer. So I'm excited to uh, explore those other avenues. And I think that this has solidified for me that uh, my my first purchase for this quarter, my, my quarterly purchase, is probably going to be Dangerous Visions, just so that I can uh, return to another avenue of Harlan Ellison and get to encounter him as an editor and see what he does with that. Uh, it's a very much a landmark edition and one that I need to have on my collection uh, if I'm wanting to cultivate a science fiction book collection, which I, I think is the direction my library has uh, started to go, and, and I have no regrets about that. There's still certainly room for uh, other genres and medieval uh, texts and, and whatnot, but I think I'm going to be cultivating a lot more science fiction. and that, that makes me happy because I'm enjoying every minute of that exploration. So if you're looking for a place to start with Harlan Ellison, uh, Angry Candy certainly is one that you could start with, and I think you would have a, a fantastic time uh, encountering, on, encountering him on the page. Uh, it, it doesn't have any of his best of the best, but Paladin of the Last Hour, if nothing else in here, uh, is one that I think is going to have some very strong universal appeal. And, uh, you know, I believe, if memory serves correctly, that one's available on his old website. Uh, so you should be able to find and read it, uh, even without picking up a copy of Angry Candy. And uh, I definitely recommend that you do so, because it is excellent. So uh, thank you, BookTube. I'll be back tomorrow with a continuation of reading about the good old stuff. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of your weekend.